I hope you're doing great in this podcast. This is the reading of 101 Essays that will change the way you think by Brianna West. مرحبا بكم هذه مقدمة بسيطة في اللغة العربية قبل شروع بقراءة 101 مقالة ستغير طريقة تفكيرك في هذه السلسلة من المقالات المجموعة من أكثر من كاتب نتناول الكثير من المسائل النفسية والاجتماعية والبدنية والسلوكية اللي تمر على الأفراد اللي بعض الأحيان يحتاج أنه نكون على وعي ودراية بها في هذه السلسلة من المقالات أنصحك أنه تستمع وتقتني الكتاب وتفتحه أثناء القراءة ظل الكلمات اللي تحتاجها أو تسبب لك بعض الإشكال وأيضا تركز على المحتوى المجموع من أكثر من كاتب أفضل هذا النوع من المقالات لأنه ينطيك أكثر من وجهة نظر من أكثر من كاتب وباحث وعالم في المجالات والتخصصات بكل تفاصيلها So let's get started. Subconscious behaviors that are keeping you from having the life you want. Every generation has a monoculture of sorts, a governing pattern or system of beliefs that people unconsciously accept as true. It's easy to identify the monoculture of Germany in the 1930s or America in 1776. It's clear that what people at those times in those places accepted to be good and true, even when in reality, that was certainly not always the case. The objectivity required to see the effects of present monoculture is very difficult to develop. Once you have so deeply accepted an idea as truth, it doesn't register as cultural or subjective anymore. So much of our inner turmoil is the result of conducting a life we don't inherently desire, only because we have accepted an inner narrative or normal and ideal without ever realizing. The fundamentals of any given monoculture tend to surround what we should by living for nation, religion, self, etc. And there are a number of ways in which our current system has us shooting ourselves in the feet as we try to step forward. Here are eight of the most pervasive. Number one, you believe that creating your best life is a matter of deciding what you want and then going after it. But in reality, you're psychologically incapable of being able to predict what will make you happy. Your brain can only perceive what's known. So, when you choose what you want for the future, you're actually just recreating a solution or an ideal of the past. When things don't work out the way you want them to, you think you've failed, only because you didn't recreate something you perceived as desirable. In reality, you likely created something better before and and your brain misinterpreted it as bad because of that. Moral of the story, living in the moment isn't a lofty ideal reserved for the Zen and enlightened. It's the only way to live a life that isn't infiltrated with illusions. It's the only thing your brain can actually comprehend. 2. You extrapolate the present moment because you believe that success is somewhere you arrive. So you're constantly trying to take a snapshot of your life and see if you can be happy yet. You convince yourself that any given moment is representative of your life as a whole because we are wired to believe that success is somewhere we get to. When goals are accomplished and things are completed, We're constantly measuring our present moments by how finished they are, how good the story sounds, how someone else would judge the elevator speech. We find ourselves thinking, is this all there is? 
because we forget that everything is transitory and no one single instance can summarize the whole. There is nowhere to arrive to. The only thing you're rushing toward is death. Accomplishing goals is not success. How much you expand in the process is. Three, you assume that when it comes to following your gut instincts, happiness is good and fear and pain are bad. When you consider doing something that you truly love and are invested in, you're going to feel an influx of fear and pain, mostly because it will involve being vulnerable. Bad feelings should not always be in interpreted as deterrents. There are also indicators that you're doing something frightening and worthwhile. Not wanting to do something will make you feel indifferent about it. Fear equals interest. Four, you needlessly create problems and crises in your life because you're afraid of actually living it. The pattern of unnecessarily creating crises in your life is actually the avoidance technique. It distracts you from actually having to be vulnerable or held accountable for whatever it is you're afraid of. You're never upset for the reason you think you are. At the core of your desire to create a problem is simply the fear of being who you are and living the life you want. Five, you think that to change your beliefs, you have to adopt new line of thinking rather than seek experiences that make that thinking self-evident. A belief is what you know to be true because experience has made it evident to you. If you want to change your life, change your beliefs. If you want to change your beliefs, go out and have experiences that make them real to you, not the opposite way around. Six, you think problems are roadblocks to achieve what you want when in reality, they are pathways. Marcus Aurelius sums this up well. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Simply running into a problem forces you to take actions to resolve it. The action will inevitably lead you to think differently. Lead you to think differently behave differently, and choose differently. The problem becomes a catalyst for you to actualize the life you always wanted. It pushes you from your comfort zone. That's all. You think your past defines you, and worse, you think that it is an unchangeable reality. When reality, when really, your perception of it changes as you do. Because experience is always multidimensional, there are a variety of memories, experiences, feelings, and gists you can choose to recall. And what you choose is indicative of your present state of mind. So many people get caught up in allowing the past to define them or haunt them simply because they have not evolved to the place of being how the past did not prevent them from achieving the life they want. It facilitated it. This doesn't mean to disregard or gloss over painful or traumatic events, but simply to be able to recall them with acceptance and to be able to place them in the storyline of your personal evolution. You try to change other people situations and things, or you just complain, get upset about them. When anger equals self-recognition, most negative emotional reactions are you identifying a disassociated aspect of yourself. Your shadow selves are the parts of you that at some point you are conditioned to believe we're not okay. So you suppress them and have done everything in your power not to acknowledge them. You don't actually dislike these parts of yourself, though. So when you see somebody else displaying one of these traits, 
it's infuriating. Not because you inherently dislike it, but because you have to fight your desire to fully integrate it into your whole consciousness. The things you love about others are the things you love about yourself. The things you hate about others are the things you cannot see in yourself. This essay was taken from Daniel Gilbert, Stumbling on Happiness, 2007. Published by Random House. مدرب اللغة وليد خالد